All right, in this video, we're using nested for loops. First of all, we're just going to make, uh, we're going to populate a three by three matrix. And then afterwards, we're going to use the same for loop to uh, make an identity matrix. So uh, all we're doing is we're making nested for loops. So we just have to put a for loop inside of another for loop. Basically, that means we're just the statement section here of the first for loop will just be another for loop. Okay, so we'll clean this up a little bit so it's a little easier to see what's going on. Um, this is our first for loop. And uh, once we initialize it, it's going to run its whole body over and over and over again until the condition is satisfied. So that means once we enter the first the statements, the first thing it sees is it's another for loop. So now it's still inside of this one's first um, first run through its steps. And in the second for loop, now it's going to run this body. Uh, the second for loop is going to run this body until this condition is satisfied. And once that's satisfied, it's going to kick us out and we'll be down at the end of the first for loops statements. And if so now if this condition still isn't satisfied, it's going to go back in to this body, which again, now it'll see this, uh, this for loop and it will again repeat this body and over and over again. And you'll see that this is going to be really easy for making something like a three by three matrix. So first of all, let's just uh, put in some values here. Let's put and i is equal to one. And here we can say, actually, we'll just go straight through. We're making three by three matrix. So, well, i is less than or equal to three, and then we're gonna increment i. <clears throat> okay, and so again, for this one, we'll just pick a different letter. It doesn't even matter. And j, let's call it, is equal to one. Uh, well, j is less than or equal to three, and we're gonna go j plus plus. Okay, so also we're gonna need one variable up here. Uh, something to store numbers in, so let's just call it int n, and we'll initialize that to 1. So all we're going to do here is going to see out n, and then we're going to update this n++. Okay, so first of all, if we just build and run this program, you're going to see it's not going to quite give us what we want, but it's good for learning. What does it do? So it just printed out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 in a straight line. Now, that's because, well, you'll see that uh, <clears throat> it just entered the first for loop, entered the second, it's seed n was set to one, and so then it seed out one, seed out two, three, and then by then we're done this loop, so it comes down here, and then it recognizes that, well, i is now only one, so it has to come back into the first loop, and then it just again sees out then four, five, six, and then it comes back in, and then seven, eight, nine. So all we have to do here is inside the body of the first for loop, just say C out and line. Okay, so now when we build and run this, you'll see that it will actually print the three by three matrix to the screen. See, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And again, if this is uh, this hopefully makes sense. So let's just work through it here. So we enter the first for loop, and i is equal to one. Uh, and then we're going to come down here. So the first body, so i is not greater than three. So we're going to definitely execute the statements here. Now, when we enter the second for loop, j is equal to one. So we're going to have to work towards getting j up to three or greater. Um, so we'll first of all see out n, which is one. Then we increment n. Now, at the end, we increase j plus plus. So now j is equal to two, which is less than or equal to three. So we're going to do this again, and it'll be we'll see out two, and then we'll see out three. And then when we're done, now that uh, once we increment n to be 4, we're not going to redo this loop because this is not true anymore. So we come down here, we exit the second for loop, we see out the end line. So now we bump down a line. And now in i, we've reached the end of the statements. So i becomes 2, which is still less than or equal to 3. So then we come back into the main body of the first loop and redo it. Um, which be, would begin the second line with a four. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, we'll just bring up that program run one more time. Um, so if you want to compare this with your code, maybe work through this with a pencil on some uh, some paper. And uh, this is how the two uh, nested for loops work. Now that's just our populating it, you know, with one through nine. But maybe we want to do something a little more, I don't know, a little different. Uh, we can easily make an identity matrix. So. First of all, uh, you know the identity matrix is, has a diagonal of ones and everything else is zero. So we won't need this int n anymore. I'll just delete that. And now what we're gonna do is in the second for loop here, we can keep everything else the same, um, but we're gonna have an if else statement. So look at this. If we go if, if i is equal to j, 
then we're going to see out um, a 1. Right, so that means if it's the row number and the column number are the same, see out 1. Okay, and then down here, else, if the row number and column number are not the same, just see out 0. And when we go build and run this program, <clears throat> you notice we kept the same C out and line down here. Um, that makes sure we have the same lines of three. And when we build and run, now look at this, one zero 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 one zero 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 one. So we successfully made our identity matrix. And uh, again, if this isn't making complete sense, um, it does work. So I would recommend just going step by step and writing it out with a pencil. Um, and that would really help your understanding of when certain things are happening, especially with a loop inside of a loop. Can this, come, uh, this can kind of get a little hairy sometimes. So there we go. That's the identity matrix, and I'll see you guys in the next video.